Egyptian journalist accused of contempt of Islam after questioning Prophet's ascension. On Friday, February 18th, Ibrahim Isa, an Egyptian journalist and critic of Muslim groups, claimed that the Prophet Muhammad's journey to Jerusalem never happened. He was referring to the Isra and Mihraj, uh, the Islamic story of Muhammad flying from Mecca to Jerusalem on a winged donkey with a human face, and then ascending to heaven where he met with Allah before returning to his followers with instructions on how to pray. During his TV show, he told his audience that some scholars have been debating the ascension of the Prophet Muhammad. According to Isa, this journey is, quote unquote, a completely delusional story. He claimed that the preachers that cite only literature that supports the purported evening excursion and ignore contradictory, contradicting sources are subscribers to Salafist fundamentalist views. Isa's statement sparked outrage among Egypt's hardline Islamists. An investigation into Isa and his alleged campaign against Islam was launched by the Public Prosecutor's Office of Egypt. In response, Dar uh, al Ifta, Egypt's Islamic advisory and governmental body, stated that the journey, quote unquote, undoubtedly occurred and cannot be denied in any manner. Egypt's Supreme Council for Media Regulation will launch a legal action against Isa as well. Oh my God. <laughs> Adults fighting over what fantasy, which version of the fantasy actually happened. This is amazing. Um, what could be the consequences for this, for this conclusion? Um, it's not entirely clear at this point. Like there's a number of investigations that are um, happening against him. So far, this has just been something that he's been accused of. Uh, to my knowledge, there haven't been any charges brought against him yet. Um, but should there be blasphemy charges against him, um, that hasn't happened. But if that were to happen, there that does carry a, a heavy punishment in Egypt. What is the argument that he makes? Like he, this, by the way, this guy is shouldn't. I mean, as much as I want to defend him because he's being attacked and everything, and he shouldn't be, and we should like free speech and everything. But he doesn't sound like a okay. What is what is his argument for why this didn't happen? Again, I can only read English translations of news stories about this because I don't. So I don't. I can't give you the full totality of his argument. But he was just saying that this is completely delusional, and he was trying to bring up the fact that there are a lot of scholars that dispute this. Um, but then By they're scholars, like, he means Islamic their... scholars, right? Yes. Okay, so this is not like a actual scholar who's saying grow up magic is not real this is kind of like a kind of like one of those islamic scholars who's saying based on my version of the fantasy this didn't happen i right? don't know about that so i wasn't able hmm. to find a lot of information about this guy or his background but it is clear that he is a big critic of muslim groups and we do have to be aware that in egypt how what you're allowed to say and how you give your religious criticism has to be right. very careful and delicate so so he might be one of those people so you're saying he might be one of those people who wants to say grow up magic is not real but he cannot say that so he has to use the framework of islamic scholarship to be like to frame. And let me tell you why because after this happened there was some high profile egyptian actor who announced that he is resigning from a film that this journalist wrote. And the name of this film is The Atheist. Oh my God. Okay. This guy is a hit secret atheist, kind of. Maybe. I'm getting that sense. I don't want to okay. accuse him of that because that's dangerous. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Never mind. The, I don't know if maybe said. the film Who? is actually an anti atheist film. I couldn't find okay, a lot okay. of information about it. Maybe but that maybe. Okay. very much piqued my curiosity. I was like, "This this guy is writing a film called The Atheist." Um, Great. So, I, I can't be clear, but there's something very interesting going on here. Read that. Obviously, comments, very sir. critical. <laughs> <laughs> Gray Jedi is saying, "Space donkey, giddy up!" Look at this. Forever Stormy is saying, let's be honest, Hindus have better 
magic flying vehicles, the Nislam. A flying donkey? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Technically, it's not a donkey. Technically, it's just a, its own species. Like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has a human face, a woman's face. It's one of its kind. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's true that Hinduism does have better flying. Do they have a swan? I think someone has a swan. Definitely Hanuman. Hanuman flies. No, Hanuman flies on his own. He doesn't need a vehicle. Well, it's a flying monkey. Okay, but he's no one's vehicle. He just, he's just, you know, so don't you dare call Damn Hanuman. Right, he's vehicle. no one's vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it, it doesn't fly, but there's no mount better than... You know what I'm going to say, right? Agnes, fire goat. True. Okay. Like compare Muhammad's flying donkey with a woman's face. Okay. That's pathetic. Okay. This is, this is why it's, I support Hinduism's mythology over Islamic mythology any day. Okay. Oh yeah. Especially, especially old Hinduism. Okay. Old like Indra and Agni. Okay. Compare that. Okay, I'm gonna have to show you guys this. Okay, sorry. I know this is off track. Agni. No, it's worth it though. It's worth it. In this okay. channel, Armin and I are fanboys and fangirls for Agni. So it's okay, been established. So, we already know this. By the way, we made Barack in our blasphemous art very sexy. Okay. So <laughs> we did make a sexy Barack. <laughs> We made a sexy Barack, okay? However, guys, if however, you want to see that, go subscribe to our Patreon to get the uncensored version. Link in the description. <laughs> All right, so compare Muhammad's flying donkey and Agni, by the way, is one of Hindu gods, much cooler than the current Hindu gods. This is a more fame, like it used to be much more prominent, okay? Look at this, okay? Muhammad's flying monkey, compare that to this. Hold on. Look at that. Oh, god L damn. Describe look at for that. anyone listening what we're looking at. I don't know how to describe this. This is undescribable. Okay. <laughs> this is this is the fire god in Hinduism, Agni. And this is his fire goat. This is the mount. This is what he rides upon. This what got why did Hinduism have to move away from this? Okay. You had Indra and Agni and a prototype of Shiva. And then you moved on to like cringe gods like Brahma. Who wants to read Brahma when you had this? You had this Hinduism. Why did you move on to Brahma? What does Brahma do for you? Look at that. Is that not epic? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do for you? Stormy but is you confirming that, yes, that there is a swan vehicle. Yeah. People are saying both Brahma or Saraswati has the swan. Indra has a chariot. His chariot is freaking awesome. Isn't Ganesha's Indra nice. actually a prototype of Zeus? I think he I mean, is. I mean, they're both a uh, ring of storm gods. And they both throw lightning I, and have chariots. And they're both, they're both sure sky. They're proto, yeah. And they're both like, well, I mean, it's, it's part of the Indo Aryan um, sky father um, model. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically. It's Sky Daddy, yeah. Basically, it's Indra and Zeus and Jupiter. Jupiter literally translates to Sky Father, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Um, by the way, let me respond to like what did Agni do for you? Agni brought you fire. Okay. Agni, Agni's role in Hinduism is similar, very similar to Prometheus. Yeah. Okay. Because both Prometheus and Agni brought fire to man, to us, and also they were more sympathetic to humans than the other gods. Well, and they were punished for it too. Yeah. Okay. So, like, this is basically if Indra is the Zeus of Hinduism, Agni is the Prometheus of Hinduism, but more badass. Like, no one's yes. going to chain this guy to a rock and have eagles eating its liver. Like, you, you, I, can you even dare attack this person? Look at this. <laughs> Nobody's going to mess with this guy. Um, <laughs> I'm saying, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> okay, cool. 
See, guys, we celebrate Hinduism here. Like, people think we're anti Hinduism. How could, you... yeah. Anyways. Oh, people are also telling about other animals that Hindu gods ride. Lakshmi has an owl. Li um, wait, who is the. Ganesh rode a mouse. Um, wait, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, Kelly's. Kelly is an avatar of. Um, uh, I, forgot. Know it is. I know what it is. I know, you know. She rides a lion. Hmm. What is it? Durgama. Durgama. God damn. She rides a lion, right? Yes. Sometimes okay. a tiger, but most often portrayed as a lion. Yeah, that actually looks really cool as well. Let me get that. It does look cool. Oh. Wait, I almost left this shit. Durgama. Man, the comments during this segment were hilarious. Bubble is saying, Hagrid didn't actually fly to meet Harry. Now put me in jail. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> And Mustafa, an ex-Muslim, is saying, I always referred to it as a scene of Pegasus while on shrooms. <laughs> I like the modern depictions of Hindu gods a lot more but more than the ancient ones. They look so much more epic. Well, I mean, to be fair, we have, you know, better artists. Artistic uh, technical skills have progressed greatly since then. We can now do hyper-realism, so <laughs> that plays in yes. our favor. <laughs> Okay, well, I didn't say, I wasn't blaming them. I wasn't saying, like, how come the artists back then were in producing such great art? I was there, like, I mean, I could. Uh, I can't find the word art of Durkama that I like. There's a modern epic version of it, but I can't find it. Right now, I only have this. Mm -hmm. You can see she's writing a tiger, tiger, tiger. But I know there's, like, a, a modern version. Oh, look, lion. She's writing a lion. Yeah, she's always like seen on a lion and she's attacking a demon on a lion. But there's one modern version of this that looks so epic and I, I don't know why it's not usually it's the first one that shows up. What well what what's going on in the photo that's like so she's much more attacking epic. No, it's just the lion the, her she looks a lot more epic, the lion looks a lot more epic, and she's fighting a demon while doing while on a lion and it just looks so amazing. I don't know why I can't find it. Gage in America is saying the Jade Emperor rode on a flying respunging dragon. What is that? What is respunging? Re re maybe respawning? <gasps> found it. I found it. Okay. Why was this not showing up the first? What was this like? Okay, guys, look at Durgama. Look at Durgama riding a lion. One second. Wow. Look at this. Oh, that's good. That is good. Look, she's. You know, in the old in the old art, you could always see she's on a lion and attacking a demon. So they did the same thing, and she, you know, she has a fidget spinner here, <laughs> and she has her like, and she's holding the head of the uh, demon in her other hand. By the way, guys, this is what Cal, what this is the god that Kali comes from, right? Kali is an avatar of this god. Well, right? Kali is like the super saiyan. Yes, Thurgama. version. Yes, exactly. When Durgama gets so angry that she loses her mind, she just levels up to Kalima. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Look at that. Okay. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> Mustafa saying, holy, holy cow <laughs> crap, that's badass. <laughs> Worth the yeah. weight in my new wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. All right, all right. Anyways, yeah, Islam does it. Uh, Hinduism does it better when it comes to mythology than Islam. It's very sad that Islam has very little mythology. You know what I mean? Like the like, I'm really fascinated with the jinn part of and the story of Iblis in Islam. But mm -hmm. like, I wish there was so much more. We could have a lot more fun with it. Like, we have Mi'raj. That's a little bit like mythology. But most of it is just about Muhammad did this, Muhammad did that. Like. I'm, Where's your mythology, Islam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Christianity has a lot of mythology over its angels and demons. Judaism has a lot of mythology. Um, Hinduism has a lot of mythology. Right? Islam is just like it would have been so much fun to, you know. But yeah, just a little bit apparently. 
Okay. I heard that the prophet did this. Well, his family did that. And then they had this battle here. And then the baby died in Karbala here. Like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, when we have demons, they make it the most p cringiest story ever. What The story that we get with demons in Islam is like, Muhammad read, was reading the Quran and the jinns liked it, the demons liked it, and they just surrounded him and listened to the Quran. This is the epic story of demons we get in Islam. They were like, oh my God, read us more Quran, Muhammad. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that is your demon story in Islam? Oh my, okay. Muhammad Senpai, read it again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, no, he couldn't read. He would give oh, us recite. another revelation. Recitation, reciting, recitation. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below